So you're doing intermittent fasting and you're wondering if coffee is better to have during your fast or tea. You see, I've talked about both in different videos and you might even be wondering, which one does Thomas do? Is he like the coffee or does he like the tea? The truth is, I like both, but they have very specific periods in which you should be having them. Coffee does different things than tea does different things. And they both have different kinds of cortisol spikes and they both have different kinds of caffeine spikes. So we just need to be paying attention to that. You see, coffee is going to be a higher shot of caffeine, which means it's gonna be a little bit tougher on the adrenals, which means you wanna be careful with coffee during specific periods of your fast. Whereas tea, on the other hand, still has a little bit of caffeine, but it's balanced by the theanine and by the antioxidants from the EGCG, so you can have that at different times. I'll explain all of this so it makes some sense, but first, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon if you haven't already. That way you're always locked into my channel. Okay, so it's important to know that cortisol comes in surges within our body, right? It doesn't just elevate all the time. We have different periods of time where our body surges cortisol. And you might be thinking, cortisol, that sounds bad. I don't want cortisol because it makes me fat. No. Cortisol is a fight or flight hormone. Cortisol will help you burn fat. Where cortisol becomes a problem is when it's in conjunction with food. You see, cortisol by itself, when you're not eating, is a fight or flight hormone that mobilizes fat and allows you to burn fat. But when it's combined with insulin and combined with food, it's also very fat storing. So cortisol during a fast is a good thing to some degree. It's also pretty hard on the adrenals if we have big spikes of cortisol. So what we have to look at is the natural sort of circadian rhythm and the natural cycle in which our body pulses cortisol. Here's an example. When you first wake up in the morning, your cortisol levels are naturally at their highest. Okay? They're naturally ready to burn fat. You are in a very fat burning state first thing in the morning. This is great for those of you that work out first thing in the morning and work out fasted because you're probably at least potentially burning more fat. Okay? So this is a great thing. But a lot of people wake up first thing in the morning and they have that cup of joe right out the gate. Well, here's the thing. You don't need to be doing that. Your cortisol levels are already at their highest point for that day. So if you add coffee to the mix, you're just increasing that cortisol even more, but you're already at the highest. You don't need to add more at that point. You're actually much better off waiting for a couple hours after you get up and then have coffee. So this is where things get a little bit more granular. When I wake up in the morning, I'll generally have matcha green tea have some re or regular green tea or sometimes even Earl Grey tea. That way I'm getting like 40, 50 milligrams of caffeine, but I'm getting the EGCG and I'm getting sort of the vasodilation effects. I'm getting the antioxidant effects that I think help me with my workout. And then a couple hours after I wake up, then I have coffee. Think of it like this. You already have a rise in your cortisol. If you add caffeine to the mix there, you're gonna actually develop a tolerance to that caffeine a lot quicker because you're basically wasting it. You don't need it at that point. Your cortisol's already high, your adrenaline's already high. Wait until you're at that valley a couple hours later, then have the coffee to lift it up so you're constantly keeping the cortisol elevated at the right times during the fast. I know it sounds totally crazy, but we have to remember, cortisol is coming in surges and spikes. We need to just time it with those. So there's a study that was published in the Journal of Endocrinology Metabolism that took a look at subjects that were fasting for five days. They found that when they were fasting, they had a 1.8 fold increase in cortisol levels. However, 1.6 fold increases in the overall mass of the surges that were increased. So yes, cortisol levels increased 1.8 fold, but most of the increases came just by larger spikes of cortisol. Meaning, even when we're fasting, we're not having this chronically elevated level of cortisol. It's just exacerbating the existing spikes that we have. So the point here is, know the spikes and know when to have coffee and know when to have tea. You have tea in line with those spikes because that way you're not adding too much cortisol and you have coffee in line with the valleys. Now, you might be wondering, okay, well that's great, but how do I know what my valleys and my peaks are? Well, you don't specifically, but you can rough estimate. You see, once again, right when you wake up, in about an hour thereafter, your cortisol levels are at their highest. Okay, for most people, this ends up being like 7, 8, sometimes 9 a.m. Okay, that's just a rough estimate, but usually an hour or two after you wake up. Okay, then after that, they're gonna dip. Okay, they're gonna dip for a few hours, and then they're gonna spike up again about three hours later. Then they're gonna dip again after an hour, and then they're gonna spike up again after like, three or four hours. So on average, you're gonna see them spike between like seven and 8 a.m. and then again between probably 11.30 and one. 
and then again between like four and five. So the point is, you don't want to be having coffee during those spikes. That's when you have tea, okay? Because then you get an additional benefit. Here's what's happening. Like green tea, for instance, the epigallocatechin-3 chelate has something in it known as catechol O methyltransferase. This is really cool stuff, and what it does is it actually stops the breakdown of the hormones that allow you to burn fat. Okay, so we're talking about like adrenaline, actually more like catecholamines, not hormones, but we're talking adrenaline, norepinephrine, things like that. So green tea stops the breakdown of those within the body. In layman's terms, that means that green tea allows your body's natural fat-burning catecholamines to last longer in the body. So since you're already at a natural state of elevated fat-burning hormones and catecholamines, you might as well have green tea at that time because it's going to allow for the natural preservation of those catecholamines in the body. So case in point, right when you wake up, you're already having high levels of cortisol, already having high levels of adrenaline, norepinephrine. That's the perfect time to have green tea because then you're going to protect and preserve that natural spike. Then when you come down into the valley a couple hours later, you have your coffee, which jolts you up higher than the tea would and therefore gives you sort of an artificial spike, if you want to call it that. Now, some of the things that I like to do, I play around with my coffees, right? I'll have regular coffee, I'll have nitro coffee, and then some of the things I've talked about before, like if I'm going for an extra brain boost, I use uh, Four Sigmatic coffee, which you've probably seen at Whole Foods, you've probably seen at grocery stores before. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is black coffee that has lion's mane and chaga mushroom in it, so it's really good for what is called brain-derived nootropic factor and for nerve growth factor. So if I'm trying to get like a mental boost or I'm gonna be filming that day or anything like that, that's definitely what I'll utilize because then I get that benefit of the cortisol elevation and the norepinephrine, at least potentially, but I'm also getting the effect of the BDNF and the NGF, so the nerve growth factor, kind of giving me what I feel like is a really good mental boost. So I highly recommend them. They're a big part of my regime. They're also a big sponsor of this channel, so a huge thank you to them. But I put a link down below if you want to check them out. That way you can get special pricing and check them out as well. So the other thing that we have to factor in with this whole equation is that we don't want our cortisol levels to be jacked up prior to breaking a fast. Okay, remember what I talked about. Cortisol is great until it's combined with food. So we don't want to be jacking up our cortisol close to the time in which we would be eating. So that goes against the grain of what a lot of people think. A lot of people think, okay, I'm going to eat and then I'm going to have coffee because it's going to help my metabolism speed up. Well, no, the coffee is going to jack up your cortisol levels, which are already jacked up because you've been fasting. So what I highly recommend is only doing the coffee in the earlier part of your fast. Okay, the second half of your fast, so the last four hours or so, I would highly recommend keeping coffee out of the equations so that your cortisol levels can come back down a little bit. Okay, so switch to tea in the afternoon for sure so that you're not elevating the cortisol levels so much so that when you do break your fast and you do eat, you don't have a simultaneous pulse of cortisol coming in at the pulse of insulin, right? We don't want cortisol and insulin at the same time. Now I know this is pretty complex, but let me just paraphrase and just summarize really, really quick for you. Okay, tea, first thing when you wake up. Okay, green tea. Then a couple hours later, possibly after your workout, a good strong cup of black coffee. Maybe utilize the Lion's Mane coffee or the Four Sigmatic if you want. Okay. Then wait a couple hours, maybe an hour or so, then have some more green tea if you want more. And then lastly, a couple hours later, you can have one more cup of coffee, but then after that, switch to green tea. Okay? Plain and simple, because they all have their effects. They are all beneficial. We just have to time them properly if we really want to get granular and have some fun with it. So as always, Thank you again for being a part of this video and for locking in on my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.